This video is sponsored by ColorCord and ArborTech. I've had this one design idea in my head for years, but I haven't taken the plunge to make it yet because I felt like it was out of my comfort zone. And I've taken a few steps just to get up to this level, done a lot more power carving, done a lot more brass work, and uh, built a couple light fixtures. So I think I'm ready to take the plunge, and that's what I'm gonna do this week. I'm gonna give it a shot, I'm gonna see how it goes. This is hugely experimental, but I'm really excited about it. So up to this point, I've made a lot of drawings of this light fixture, but I've never actually seen it in space. And I like to make a template so that I, I can get, get a feel for the proportions of it. I make a lot of templates in my shop and um, they have lots of different functions. But you're gonna see, I use this throughout this entire build and it, it comes in a lot of handy. I find that inspiration comes from the strangest places sometimes, and this project is inspired by a 24-inch LED replacement bulb. I replaced all the shop lights in my shop uh, from fluorescent tubes to, to LEDs, and I found these really cool bulbs, and they're, they're super lightweight, they're easy to use, they're direct wired, but that form factor, for some reason, I found really inspiring. I was really happy with the proportions of this. I figured out where the light fixture needed to be and I was ready to start cutting into some more expensive materials. I picked up this beautiful piece of quarter sawn white oak from my local Rockler store. I chose the quarter sawn wood because it has those beautiful rays in it. I, I knew that power carving into it would, would reveal those rays and uh, it's just gonna have a really cool effect. It's also gonna help me book match the ends because the grain is so straight throughout the board that it, it's gonna match up really well as I glue the multiple parts together. So I cut down the oak to the correct size for my templates, but then really quickly realized that I needed another template. This one is gonna be kind of the vertical profile of the piece, and I'm gonna use this for both the top and the bottom, and this is just make sure that everything stays symmetrical. These oak blocks are extremely heavy, and since this is gonna hang over my head at my desk, I wanna make sure that I lighten it as much as possible. I can use that template that I just made to trace out the interior lines, and that's gonna help me when I power carve to know kind of where to carve away, and also to make sure that the weight is evenly distributed throughout the light fixture. Now I was ready to carve, and for that I'm using the power carving unit from ArborTech with their turboplane attachment installed. This is my go-to for roughing passes. It's great for hollowing out materials, and it just makes short work. Even this really dense oak, it, it chews right through it. I think I spent about between five and 15 minutes per section of these just hollowing them out. And uh, I don't need them to be super precise, but just nice enough so I've got plenty of glue surface later, but it's also pretty hollow to, to eliminate that weight. I find using this tool is, is pretty intuitive and with just a little bit of practice, you get a feel for kind of what grabs and what doesn't. It never really jumps out of your hand. It might just kind of grab a bit of grain and tear it out if you're not going in the right direction. I've also found that if I tuck my elbows and sort of move from my legs rather than my wrists, I, I get a more consistent cut. Also, I'm sure a lot of you are looking at the table and being like, what, this is hooked up to dust collection? It doesn't look like it. Well, that's because my dust collector was full when I was doing this. I don't, I don't know why I didn't think to, uh, to empty it out, but I did later, and so you'll actually see the dust collection later in this build, but for now, it's, it's basically not working at all. When I stand and carve, I can't really see those lower lines or sort of the high spots. So I go over the top of those high spots with a Sharpie and then I can knock those down really easily. And, and I'll go back and do that several times throughout the process just to get an even carve throughout. Thank you. 
after test fitting the two panels together, I, I noticed that they had a bit of a, a warp in them. There was a gap in the center, and so I decided to run them through my drum sander, just one light pass. I, I didn't have a lot of material to spare, so uh, this, this was enough to just kind of get them flat enough and get them ready for the glue up. One of my favorite tricks for gluing up things that need to align perfectly is to add just a little bit of table salt into the glue. The crystalline structure of the salt embeds into the wood when you put pressure from the clamps. It doesn't slide around like it would with just regular wood glue. One thing that I like about working with ArborTech is they're always coming out with new designs and new styles of carvers. They just came out with the precision carving system, and this comes with three different carving heads that go onto the power carving unit. This is the mini ball gouge. It's literally my first time testing it out, and it works super well. I love how much reach you can get in. The fact that I can clean up the inside of this is pretty amazing but I really liked this barrel carver. The ball couch worked well, sort of right on the seams or, or sort of rounded edges, but the barrel carver was great at flattening seams. So you can see I was able to run it along this whole section and, and flatten it out really, really well. I'm constantly impressed with, with ArborTech stuff. I do have a discount code for people if you're interested. It's almfab20 at checkout and you get 20% off anything in their lineup. So now that I've got the inside all cleaned up, I can start working on the outside. And again, I'm gonna reference that template. The template tells me where that inner carved section is so I don't accidentally cut through it and, and ruin the piece. With it roughed out on the bandsaw, I can go back to the turbo plane and refine the shape. Once I had it roughed out, I could switch over to the sanding disc. This is a flexible sanding pad, and uh, I just have 120 grit sandpaper on it. And this is a good way to refine it before going to the final hand sand. So now we're into the brass making portion of the build. I'm so excited about this. I'm having a blast working with brass. And I will say that I was super nervous at this stage. If you follow me on Instagram, you would have followed a lot of the drama, but it, it was, I'm just really excited about brass. I, I can't wait to, to use it in more builds. And this chunk of four inch by quarter inch brass is just amazing to work with. I'm, I'm not really set up to work with brass. I'm sort of slowly figuring out how to work with it, but it seemed like the Porter Band was a great way to go. I just cut a little bit away from my line and uh, it did a pretty good job.
spent a lot of time thinking about how this light fixture is going to get assembled and disassembled so that it can be repaired if need be. Uh, but I, I ended up coming up with, with just really pretty brass screws. I, I don't mind exposed screws on things. Uh, I get a lot of flack sometimes for using exposed screws, but I like the industrial look of it. And that's that's kind of the goal with this, this light fixture is to keep it looking somewhat industrial. So I just made sure to drill out wider than the actual thread of the screw. And then I countersunk with this uh, counterbore bit. These are great for metal work. They're so clean and consistent. So I drilled them out. I had my depth stop set so that they were all set at exactly the same level. And that way the screw head would sit perfectly flush on the surface. So again, I've just rough cut this piece of brass and uh, I'm gonna attach it directly to the oak. I, this was all theoretical. I didn't know whether it was gonna work or not. I talked about it a lot on Instagram, whether I, I could do this or not. Some people said no, some people said yes, it'll work fine. So I'm gonna try template routing brass. I'm gonna use a router bit on this brass. We'll see if it works. shocked with the results of this. I did not expect it to go anywhere near this smoothly. It looks awesome. And look at these crazy shavings that came off of it. I removed the blue tape just to check to see how everything looked and it seemed to be just fine. I was super impressed. Like I said, one thing is that I was going very slowly. My feed speed was very slow. Uh, I don't have a variable speed router, but if you did, maybe turning the, the speed down a little bit lower would be a good idea too. I'm building this light fixture kind of from the top down. So I've made the sort of top cover and then the middle brass reflector plate. And now I'm making the bottom sort of side wings that are gonna hold the actual light fixture itself. It made it a lot easier to carve out the center first and then cut them in half and sort of sandwich them together. This, this helps book match the grain, which is really nice for the carving. So you won't really notice the seam as much. And it also makes sure that they're exactly the same size. At this point, I return to the template that I made at the very beginning. This is gonna be the side reflector that is gonna support the light bulb. One note about this brass is that it has not been polished yet and it's gonna be really shiny in the end, but right now it kind of looks like junk. Uh, this is just kind of how you get raw brass. I learned from earlier projects where you just don't wanna polish the brass too soon because it'll end up getting scratched up. So you guys will have to stick around to the end to see it all nice and shiny. So I needed to make a hole in the center for the light bulb. And for that, I decided to screw down these plates because I was gonna use a pretty aggressive hole saw to make that hole. Wow, that didn't work. Damn. 
So I made two errors there. One of them was pre-drilling. I, I found that the pre-drilling actually kind of dragged the plate upward. And so I should have just started with the hole saw. The other mistake that I made was that I, I didn't have deep enough screws. I was using a half inch sheet of plywood, which is really dumb. So instead I grabbed a one inch board, got inch and a quarter screws, and then it worked just fine. Brass screws are they're kind of they're kind of the worst. They want to snap on you. They are incredibly fragile, and you have to be really, really careful with them. And by really careful, I mean don't use a power drill, Michael. Shit. plate removed I can drill out holes for the side wings for these I'm not gonna be using brass screws I'm just gonna use steel ones because you're not gonna see them now that the reflector is positioned on the side wings I can trace out the brass plates so that I have reference take it over to a bandsaw and and rough cut them I have to cut both the upright face as well as the underside of this. I'm gonna save the blocks that are off cut from the upright face and then I can I can use that square side to, to cut the opposing face and it just makes it a lot more stable to go through the saw. are pretty small. I just screwed them down to a block of wood. This allows me some clamping surface. I also put them right up against each other so that I can kind of get the same curve on both pieces. I also put the top piece in front of me so I've got a nice reference to make sure that all the curves are matching up and they look right. The first time around I used the wood to template route the brass. Now I'm using the brass to template route the wood. This was a super easy way to do this and uh, it made it a way easier to carve because I had a, a good reference surface. Uh, all I had to do was basically get the rough out done. One thing that I would have done is I probably would have carved this a little bit more when the router bit was kind of going over the back edge. It, it wanted to dig into the fibers of the wood so I had to do a climb cut, which isn't the best, but I was able to get a fairly smooth finish in the end. The router bit wasn't tall enough to get all the surfaces, but it was enough for me to kind of establish where I needed to go and, and carve to that line. Once I got it rough carved, I could switch over to the flexible sanding disc and refine the shape. brass plate needs a hole on either end, one for the cords and another just to kind of keep the weight nice and even on both sides. It's also going to eliminate quite a bit of weight because the brass plate is super heavy. Speaking 
speaking of cords, my color cord shipment showed up and I ordered a variety pack. I'm not sure what color cord I want to use on this, but they sent me a bunch of odds and ends and parts and they knew I was working with brass. So loads of brass pieces. If you're interested in making your own light fixtures or just designing your own light fixtures, they'll actually build them for you. Go check out the color cord website. It's really fun to look at. It's great for inspiration. And you can use code ALM15 at checkout to get 15% off your purchase. Like I said, they sent me out a variety pack of brass fittings and parts, and I'm gonna be organizing these just to kind of see what is there and, and what, what inspires me to use uh, on the light fixture. And it, this is gonna be really handy to have in the future, so I kind of know what exists out there and, and what kind of options I have. a place for the cord to go through into this side wing area and I really wanted it to go clean through the brass plate. Super nervous about drilling this out. I didn't know if it was going to work. I was anticipating ruining the light fixture right here but the only way to do it is, is to just go for it. angry but it's working Ooh. did it wow that was scary after taking a little bit of a breather, I was ready to tap the hole. I, I tapped the hole. I didn't add any uh, tapping fluid to this because I was worried it would run into the wood. And I was just very careful, very cautious with tapping it. I could then insert the brass tube fitting that I got from Color Cord and prep to drill out the hole for the light switch. I only have about a quarter inch of threads on the light switch and the, the side of the oak is, is pretty thick so uh, I had to thin it out with the barrel carver sneak up on it until I got a nice fit. As I mentioned before, this is essentially a fluorescent light fixture. So I, I grabbed an old fluorescent fixture and, and stole the tombstones off of it. These tombstones lock into place with sort of spring tension. And I, I think the best way to replicate that is just to steal one and, and alter it. I need to alter it because the wires come out the front of it and I need them to come out the back. So I removed the little brass pins that were inside of there, pulled out the wires, and then I could take it over to my bandsaw and trim off that front face. After trimming it, I realized that the brass pins were gonna stick out the front, so I trimmed off a little bit of those, and then I soldered wires to the back side of them. They actually already had a hole in them, so it was super easy to solder them, and just to make sure that things were safe, I shrink tubed any exposed sections of copper. After that, I just reassembled the tombstone and basically works like normal. It just has wires that come out the back. Next step was to figure out how to mount it to the brass. And to do this, I just made a cardboard template. I tested some, out, some stuff out and what ended up being the simplest solution was just this cross pattern. 
I made sure that it, it fit all the way around, that I had enough slack, and then I cut it out of sheet metal. This entire build is improvising. I, I didn't really have a full plan going into it, but I'm really happy with how this ended up sort of coming together. I didn't have a flat tap the correct size to do this with, so I just drilled it out and then took some, some screws with some oil and tried to use the screw to cut the threads, which, which worked just fine, but then the screw is a little bit too long, so I sanded down the tip of it and uh, once that was done, I was able to get it in with, with a couple of washers to space it out with. Now, full disclaimer, I'm not an electrician. I think this is okay, uh, but I'm sure if it's not, people will tell me in the comments. Uh, you know, this is, this is for me, and I'm not going to sell it to a client, so I, I'm really happy with it. I wanted to do one more assembly before doing the final polish and finish work, uh, just to make sure that everything was working, make sure that the switch works, make sure that the wiring was correct, and uh, just make sure that everything fits properly. Color cord included in the package uh, a plug-ended cord. They, they'll sell these whatever length that you want, and so I used that as my test cord. I, I hooked it up, hooked up the light bulb, and just made sure that it was all functional. It works. All right. After that, I was ready to do final polishing and sanding on all the parts. With the brass, you kind of want to wear gloves, and I, I like using this brown Scotch Brite. You also want to Scotch Brite the brass parts that come from color cord. These come in raw brass, which is great because you can apply all sorts of different patinas and finishes to it. But you got to make sure and clear coat the surface of it. In this case, I'm using a specially formulated lacquer that's designed for brass. I also really like using the bench cookies to support these while I'm spraying them. It keeps them up off the table, allows me to spray those edges and make sure I don't touch them at all during the process. For the oak, I'm gonna be applying a coat of Rubio Monocoat Cotton White. I've been using this fairly often now in the shop and I, I really like the look of it, especially on oak. It fills in the pores of the grain and, and makes them pop. When you spend this much time carving a piece, you really want to see the grain. And even though this kind of functions like a stain, it's more like a filler. It, it fills in those, those grain sections and it actually brings out more of the grain than you would see if you just put on a natural finish. At this point, it felt like I had assembled and disassembled this like fixture like 20 times. I was really efficient at it. I put on my gloves. I made sure not to mess up any of the finishes. And honestly, it was really satisfying to put this together for one last time.
you made it this far in the video, give a shout out to Winston. He was hanging out the whole time. And a uh, big thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. Uh, you support me every single month. I really appreciate it. If you want to join the Patreon, there's a link right here. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.